Hello, Caroline from Spirit of Nature Art and welcome to episode six of the Enchanted Garden Altered Lap Book collaboration with the amazing artist, Rachel Tribble. This is where we've got to so far with all that amazing art that Rachel sent to me. We've done these wonderful dragonfly pockets and the wildflower meadow behind. We've done this lovely enchanted forest era, area over here with the um, specimen slides. We've got these wonderful tags inside the dragonfly pockets. We've done the forest hut here. Um, and today we are going to focus on that page behind the forest hut. And there's quite a little bit of preparation to do before we get anywhere near that page. So I have got out some of my die cuts because I want to make some little pockets. When I was thinking about this page, because it's behind the forest hut, I was thinking that I wanted it to feel a little bit like going into my garden shed where there are lots of little um, kind of boxes with loads of seed packets in and uh, little uh, instructions for, you know, don't forget to, um, to prune this tree at this time. So I kind of wanted this feeling of perhaps uh, of kind of capturing that. So I've started off with a old, um, file suspension file folder that's this green card that I'm using here and I have put my um, put that through the die cutting machine to make this little uh, library card pocket but I'm gonna alter it slightly because that's what I do um, so I don't want to fold this along the normal line here I think this might be an Elizabeth craft designs um, die cut not 100% sure and you're supposed to fold it along that dotted line there but that's not what I'm doing. I want to create a bit of gusset. I want to create some more kind of space in this uh, little pocket here. So I'm using my steel rule there just to create some additional folds. So that I'm creating that little kind of extra kind of mini spine there um, on that pocket. So we've got more space to put things in. So I'm just really kind of working with my burnishing tool there because it's, it's quite tricky folding something so close to uh, a line that's already been scored by the die cutting machine. So as you can see, here we go, nice and easy. You can see I'm just placing my rule either side of that scored line and then just taking my time to fold that on the line I want it to. Every so often it wants to go on the other line and then burnishing that really well so that we can create this extra space in the pocket here. And I'll do exactly the same with the bottom uh, as well, so that we can create that extra space there too. So you can see now that we've got this pocket here that's got more space in it. So I'm just going to ink around all the edge of that now before I do any sticking down, because it's an awful lot easier to do that. This is vintage photo oxide ink. And do the same around all the little elements that came with this die cut. And I'm also gonna recut that little pocket that goes right on the front there using some of that dictionary page. And you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm just gonna use that same die here, but run it through with the dictionary page. So I've got this little extra bit here. And I'm just gonna snip off that little top bit so that I can stick that down like that so it creates that little bit more definition. You can tell that there's a pocket there now. So I, I did do, use my distress inks on it just to um, make that match the rest of everything else we've done. So a little bit of tea dye to take away the harsh whiteness of the dictionary page and then vintage photo around the edge. And then just sticking that down there makes it much more obvious that we have ourselves another pocket. So this kind of stacked pocket here is gonna give us lots of space. So I'm going to do the same with my dictionary page up on this back piece here. So just putting some glue down and sticking the page on top so that I can cut around it. And this little pocket here is going to give me that feeling of kind of somewhere where I stack all of my, all of my seeds. So again, just using my distress inks, tea dye on the actual page, vintage photo around the edge, and then a tiny bit of ground espresso on the very edges. And you can see how this is all gonna to stack together now, creating multiple pockets. But before I stick it together, whilst it's nice and flat, it's much easier to do some stamping. So I am bringing in some Tim Holtz stamps here. I think that's from entomology or specimen. Uh, and these ones 
either from eccentric etc or field notes this one's field notes definitely so i've got a bit of a mix there and i'm just using a mix, mix of colors as well so i'm just bringing in some forest um hmm, uh what's it called the green one <laughs> and barn door is the red one um ah oh, rustic wilderness maybe that's the green one <laughs> um, um and also the vintage photo here so you can see i'm just building up lots of different uh kind of stamps there different colors different types of stamps on all of those pieces there just to bring that little pocket together so now i can start to assemble this and get this stuck down i just want to make sure i've got everything in the right place so whilst i know this pocket's in the right place i'm just going to put a couple of little pencil marks so that when I stick this down, I can make sure it's in the right place. So I'm just gonna put a really, really fine bead of glue all the way around the edge of that pocket because this pocket's small enough as it is. I don't want to have that glue really squidging out. So I'm just lining that up with those pencil marks now and just getting rid of any excess. Now this one, you need to be careful when you stick this down because we don't want to stick down the actual kind of pocket flap. So I'm just doing a very fine bead of glue around those three sides there and then completely gluing that top flap so that that one sticks in place, creating that little pocket beneath. So if I'd have left that bit green there, the whole lot would have just kind of faded into each other and it wouldn't have been so obvious that we have this nice little pocket here to pop a little card in. And now I wanted to glue those flaps down. Um, <laughs> if I had this in shot, you'd see that I'm putting glue on there um, and then uh, just sticking that in place. And because I can't get to that, those flaps properly, um, that have been glued down. I just used my steel rule just to push those down. And now I want to think about what's going to go in these pockets. So I have used another die here. I think this is from Amazon um, and just cut out this kind of longer kind of specimen slide um, and just finding some more little offcuts from the cards that I've used from Rachel already. Um, cut out this flower from one of them and I'm just edging that with my VersaFine embossing pen and adding some more of that lovely gold uh, embossing powder there. Just to add to that little lone flower on that uh, offcut over on the side. So it's gonna look a bit like that. But before I get everything stuck down, I want to just edge with the ink because I won't be able to do that once I've stuck down everything else. So. Again, a little bit of stamping just to add some more detail. Same kind of combination of stamps I'm using here and same combination of colors. And just um, masking off any areas that I've already stamped that I don't wanna stamp over. And now I'm just gonna pop a little bit of acetate onto there so we can kind of get that sense of this being a specimen slide and just using teeny, teeny, tiny beads of glue all the way around the edge of there so that when I stick the acetate down, it doesn't all splurge out onto the nice clear acetate. And then just lining up these two little bits of offcut that I want to peek through that slide, just fiddling around with that until I've got it in the space I want it to be in. And when I'm happy with that, just gluing that down before it moves. And now I want to glue that piece in in the same way. So just over the top of the acetate now, same thing, bead of glue all the way around. And then I'm gonna place this down like this because then I can see exactly where it is when it hits the glue. And I want this little specimen slide to be a pocket. So I'm going to glue just those long edges together so that I'm creating that little extra pocket where I can put that little card from the other die cutting in there. And never want to miss the opportunity for a bit of journaling space. I'm going to put some tea dye paper on the back of that 
specimen slide there. So there's another little journaling spot. So I'm just going to edge that with vintage photo before sticking that down. And then we can see that really cute little file card there will just slide inside. So again, another little journal spot. So now I'm going to turn my attention to some more offcuts to fill up our little kind of library card holder here. So these two little offcuts, I just trimmed the top corners off to make them look like tags. And I'm just using my crocodile there to put in some gold eyelets to match everything else. So these are literally just the offcuts from the other cards that I've used through the rest of the project. And here's another little packet of offcuts. Um, just looking for a couple of contrasting colours here just to stand out in those pockets, just to use that really cute little file card die. So I'm just going to use these two pieces here. When I use the second one, I put the die on the other side, on the non-coloured side, so that when I pop it out of the die, the little tag is on the opposite side to the other one. So you'll see when I put them together like that, there we go, you can see the little tabs are on the uh, on the opposite sides. So don't forget you can flip the, the die over as well. Uh, there was another off cut there from one of the tree um, cards that I did. So again, just chop the corners off and put an eyelet in. And then I'm just going to stamp onto these little cards. So I'm using archival ink because these are gloss cards. So I'm using archival ink there to be able to stamp these Tim Holtz stamps onto them which just gives them that extra little zing. And this here is a Lavinia stamp, this beautiful hair. And I'm using my Versamark embossing ink to stamp onto this little offcut here because I want to bring some more of that gold in. This was one of the, this offcut I think was from one of the flowers that I used hmm, on the specimen side page. So just adding some of that beautiful gold embossing powder. Look at that hair. He absolutely gorgeous. So just flicking off as much of the excess as possible. I quite like the odd little kind of bit of embossing powder elsewhere. It almost looks like little stars in the sky. So I don't get too um, het up about getting rid of every last little bit. But as long as the shape is defined, I quite like the little speckles that are kind of around the outside of it. So you'll notice that on the dragonflies and on all the other bits I've done as well. And there's nothing more satisfying than heat embossing. Look at that. Amazing. I love it. And I'm going to edge it as well like I have on the others. So just using that embossing pad just to go around those edges and add just a hint of that embossing ink on there so that that gold powder picks up on it. And I will go back and do the top edges as well, but I can't do that whilst I'm holding it. So I need to do it in two goes. Always, always putting away my embossing powder before I put the heat gun on high. <laughs> Otherwise it blows everywhere. So just that extra little bit of gold on the edge there really makes a difference and pulls everything together. Added a little bit more of that sari ribbon on the top and look at all these little tags. There's the hair, there's that butterfly. Here are the tree off cuts and I've just done the same with them all. I've added a bit of embossing powder to the edge just to get that gold kind of finished to it. And now I'm just bringing in a little bit of that luster wax and again that Sizzix gold luster wax and just going around the very edge um, on the little pocket there that matches then what we did with the specimen slides on the other page. And just tucking all these lovely little journal cards into this pocket. This is what the feeling I wanted, absolutely stuffed. When you look at where my seeds are kept, they're absolutely stuffed to the full. So um, that was the effect that I really wanted to get from this. So let's use some more offcuts. Let's make some more little journaling cards to go in here. So um, I have these beautiful blues and purples and turquoise and teals. And I just want to use as many little bits as possible. So and I've got these offcuts here from where I um, cut out some of those dies for the uh, wildflower meadow page behind the dragonflies. So those two colours just go beautifully together. So I'm just tearing around the edge of it and then adding again some embossing ink and some more of that gold embossing powder so that when I stick this down, oh I love this colour, 
colour combo is beautiful. And then again, I've just edged it with gold and also stamped on the word dream with my embossing ink as well before I added the gold embossing powder. And again, another off cut here, um, this little, another little off cut from the trees as well. So I am just, again, same thing, gold embossing. Um, and I stamped the word sacred onto that little off cut of the tree before I stuck that along the bottom as well. So loads and loads of cards and journal spots using those off cuts. So now it's time to assemble everything together. So a piece of tea dyed paper here that's gonna go on the back of this page. So I'm going to take it all the way across into that spine area there. So you can see that is all nicely covered up. So you're not going to see any little bits of that peeking through when we finished. And that's where the spine will go. And again, I'm going to echo what we did on the other page behind the dragonflies. So I'm taking some more of that dictionary paper. I've torn it. Um, I've edged it with vintage photo. And I'm just going to stick that together to create a border down both sides and also bringing in a piece um, of the original book that we used as well so absolutely mimicking what's on the other wildflower page you won't ever see the two together which I've just realized as I'm editing this, but <laughs> just starting to bring this together. So you'll see, look, I made a second one of those little pockets so we can absolutely stuff this full of journal spots and really get that feeling that I was talking about in my garden shed of seed packets stuffed in all those little pockets. So it's time to stick everything together now. So I am sticking down the, uh, the wildflower book page to the top of the dictionary page have the same treatment, just that distress edging. Once it's kind of in the right position, I'm gonna tear that off to make it sure it's the right size. And just kind of re-inking those edges that I've torn. And now, just before I stick everything down, again, just mimicking that other page, I'm just using my, this is my little Paper Artsy script stamp, just adding a little bit of that onto the background, just to add that little bit of texture there. And I'm just gonna empty my pockets out here so that I can see where I want these to go. Cause I've also been cutting out some more of these lovely wildflowers from Rachel's uh, cards. We've used some of these already um, and that beautiful butterfly. So time to put it all together. I have gold edged all of that fussy cutting that I did on Rachel's flowers and butterflies so it's literally time to stick everything down and see the final results so first of all the pockets let's see where they are going to go like that and now the flowers just starting to see where they are going to go and what i will do is when i've got these in the right place i'm actually going to stick these to the card to the pockets, sorry, first, before I then stick them to the page because these ones have got to be in that right place. So just kind of playing around with the position of how I want everything to be. And as much as possible, I want to stick things together before I actually then stick them to the page. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So just playing around with that placement. Now, lots of these pieces are touching each other, so I can glue them together and they'll all remain in one piece when I remove that pocket. And then I can stick the whole thing down together without having to kind of start from scratch again. So you'll see over on the other side there, some of those pieces are all stuck together already, the flowers stuck to the pocket. So I'm just gluing these two edges down now. And here we go. So you can see those flowers are stuck to the pocket. Those flowers and leaves over there are already stuck to the pocket as well. So I can now glue those down as a whole, knowing that everything's already in the right place. So I'm just sticking everything together. Just 
just using my ruler there just to go in and press down on those bits I can't get to because those pockets are 3D. Then coming in, doing the same over here. Making sure I've got glue on all of those little areas up there before I stick that down. And then these last little bits here that didn't have enough kind of space for me to connect them onto the, uh, the other bits. So these are just going to go in now. And finally our butterfly. And all that is left to do is to stuff the envelopes full of all these lovely journaling cards. I love how this looks. I'm so pleased with how it's all come out. Because those are all scraps. Everything in those pockets is scraps. And I love how it looks with everything else. They all feel like treasures. The colours are so beautiful. So here is where we are already. I just I so can't believe it. That page there on the right is the only one left to do inside the book. So we have our Enchanted Forest Cottage over on the left hand side. Then we have this beautiful page with all of our, our pockets and all of our journaling cards next to our beautiful dragonfly pockets and then the uh, Enchanted Forest with the specimen cards and the journaling cards over on the other page there. And of course when you open up the dragonflies, not only do you have the journaling spaces on the back of them and the journaling cards inside each one of them, but when you open it all up you have another beautiful wild flower meadow with another dragonfly all cut out from these beautiful cards that Rachel has sent through and of course all of these packs Rachel has uploaded some more packs there was a, the original pack that had the dragonflies in and the flowers Rachel has uploaded some more of the packs that have the forest huts um, on as well so do go and check I'll put her Etsy shop below so you can go and check um, and of course if you put in spirit of nature art at the um, the till you will get um, a 15% discount on your spirit of nature art related journaling packs so there we go one more inside page to go I will see you soon